Uh, hey guys, it's Brian Paul sitting here in VR as always, and, and I'm playing the Bellows. Uh, it's a VR horror experience. Uh, let's dive right into it here. We'll turn the motion sickness vignette off, uh, because that's not necessary for me. I'm sure some people have to do that. Um, you can play with the uh, PlayStation Move controllers. Um, you can play with two. I'm assuming you can also play with one. Uh, I've done it. Let's just say we're not going to do it again. And we'll skip the tutorial because it's practically unnecessary. Uh, the bellows feels like it was designed for somebody's first VR experience. It doesn't seem like a game or an experience that was designed for real gamers or people that have spent some time in VR. Uh, because, uh, for multiple reasons, I guess. Um, first and foremost, uh, well, first there's click turning and no option to have anything but click turning. Um, so obviously they're a little bit concerned about motion sickness. Uh, secondly, there's not a lot to do. Um, you just go from the beginning to the end and things like this are mind-boggling. Uh, if you're in a locked room, the very first room, how many people do you think play-tested this and was like, oh, I don't know what to do? So they were like, well, go stand here. Um, so you stand here and it triggers uh, the next set of actions. Now what you'll, what you'll see here is, is fairly indicative of, of, uh, of what the rest of the game entails. Um, flashing lights, things appearing and disappearing, uh, and that's and that's sort of the extent of it. The game doesn't have a lot of uh, doesn't build suspense, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have uh, either the knowledge or the ability to do so, uh, probably because it's such a short experience. But more so because I think that they decided instead to just like, just have an endless barrage of jump scares. Uh, as you'll see, it's non-stop. Um, and I think anybody who's ever, uh, you know, been to a haunted house or uh, watched scary movies, you, you know that for jump scares, for them to be effective, uh, they have to be, you have to build up to them. Like, you have to build some suspense and give the player or the, or the viewer a reason to be scared. Uh, and... There are things like, you know, these lights all going off, making you feel helpless. Uh, but then it gets... This is what it builds to, is you're, uh, you taking a lantern. <laughs> uh, so yeah, motion controls, even with the dual shock here. Uh, and it's cool to have a lantern. Uh, the one thing I will say about the, the move controllers, uh, like I said, I played through once with the move controllers and then realized that the DualShock was really the way to go. Um, the move controllers involves you holding the move controller in a certain direction and pushing the move button to walk in that direction. Uh, it feels clunky, it feels unnecessary. Uh, and the triggers uh, would, would close your hand, but it, it there was no real, there's no real interactivity. So the DualShock is the way to go because if you're gonna have click turning anyway, then you might as well have a normal DualShock uh, analog stick giving you the ability to move around. This was my first uh, fun thing to do. That's, flip that over there. That's not a broken physics engine like I thought it was initially. That's uh, just the game saying, hey, gravity in this haunted house is, is really messed up. Uh, and there's not, there aren't too many objects to interact with. I love that it just clips through that giant plant. Um, in fact, I don't, I don't know if there's, besides those pots right there, um, I don't think there's really much at all to interact with in this game. Now, when I first discovered this, uh, it was, uh, I, I showed it off on a breaking news segment on the channel. And... You know what? Yeah, all of this just seems like it would be more impactful if gravity was normal. Like if it hit the wall and fell to the ground, you'd be like, whoa. But since it just kind of floats there, like, meh. It's not terribly scary. Uh, yeah, so when I first discovered this, that this game was coming, or this experience was coming, uh, I did a breaking news segment on it, and um, it's kind of cool. There's uh, either mental patients or, or something walking around down there. 
I'm not exactly sure. I don't even know what those shadows on the wall are. It looks like plants just kind of growing and retreating kind of thing. Um, oh, you know, I didn't even notice that chandelier drop last time. Eh. There are definitely things I missed the first time around. So on the breaking news segment, I called this uh, a haunted house simulator. And as soon as that segment went up on YouTube, I, I didn't feel good about that term because haunted house simulator, it reminds me of like walking simulator, that kind of descriptor that doesn't seem accurate. That sort of like minimalizes what something is. Like you could call Resident Evil 7 a haunted house simulator, right? Because it's 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 a survival horror game and you're in a house and it's a lot of scary stuff is happening. But this game, I didn't realize till I played it for myself that a haunted house simulator actually nails the entire the entire vibe, the entire I don't want to say aesthetic, but but that's exactly what this game is. It, it's almost like your neighbor you're down the street, you know, came up and knocked on your door and was like, "Hey, Brian Paul, come check out uh, the haunted house I built for Halloween." That could have been scary, but I have no idea what it was. Uh, and then you go, uh, and you go, you know, you walk down the street, and you, you know, with your neighbor, and you enter his haunted house, and there's rooms with flickering lights. And people laying on gurneys. Uh, the zero gravity stuff would be uh, a little difficult to to replicate, but that's that's the vibe that this whole thing gives off. Is is like you are just a dude walking from the beginning of a haunted house to the end of the haunted house, uh, and that's for me. That's kind of cool. Uh, I love haunted houses. It's my favorite thing about Halloween and, and October in general. I, I try to go to as many as possible. Um, there's uh, this Witch's Woods. That's uh, like a 40-minute drive from here, which is why I don't get to go every year. Um, driving, eh, you know. And then, uh, and the, but then right down the street is uh, here in Worcester is the the Factory of Terror. And the Factory of Terror is very cool. Um, I can't wait. It's like what I look forward to every year. Um, and you can actually blast through the uh, all of the Factory of Terror very quickly as well. Oh, I think this is this is supposed to be a mirror over here. You can wave your hand, and there's like a, a crib or whatever you want to call it. Oh, and there it is over here. And then you look back, and you're like, oh, oh, oh no, a monster just threw the crib. And you look back over here, you're like, yeah, it's gone. But where's the monster? Eh. Now I, I know I'm, I'm sort of making light of all the of all the scares in this, and um, and I'm not trying to, but it, it is kind of if you're not easily scared, then this game won't scare you. This this will not be uh, very impactful for you. Um, the first time through, yeah, I mean I held my breath a little bit and was just like, oh, I don't know what to expect, and. Oh, and, and by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, with that loading screen, we are now officially halfway through the game. Uh, the game just automatically brings you to the second the second part. So here we go with our trusty lantern. Uh, now, the, what's, what's interesting uh, is that, you know, my second time through, you go, oh, well, Brian, you've already seen all of the scares. Like, you know what to expect. Um, you know, so obviously it's not going to be scary the second time. Now, not to compare this to Resident Evil 7, because I feel like that would be a little unfair, but because Resident Evil 7 is such a freaking triple-A game, like a high development uh, budget, and, uh, and and it's just, you know, full price, and this is a $5, you know, 20-minute experience. So it's unfair to compare the two. But I will say that I'm on my second playthrough of Resident Evil 7, and my first playthrough was the scariest thing I'd ever done, and my second playthrough was the second scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, so, I mean, if you're looking for something scary and you haven't played Resident Evil 7 in VR, then you owe it to yourself to play that game. This, again, is very much like a haunted house simulator. Um, in fact, so much so that I think I would have prepared, would have prepared, would have, um, preferred. Like, why not just go all the way with this? Like, with the concept of a haunted house simulator is, is actually really cool. So why not make it an amazing first VR experience for people, an amazing um, uh, haunted house simulator in just as a shadow here. It's like 
Somebody's supposed to be sitting in that chair. So you walk over here. You look around. I got a trophy for some reason the first time. Sneaky chalk. Sneaky chalk. Sneaky chalk. And then this guy just sneaky chalk. endlessly sneaky says chalk. sneaky chalk. Sneaky chalk. Which I don't know sneaky what mean chalk. that means. Um, maybe sneaky there's chalk. something I should have been paying attention to. Uh, but so why not? Why like I said, why not go all the way with this and make it like a, a haunted house ride, like something out of Disney, but you know, cool. Um, Six Flags, you know. Uh, put put me in a cart, like a little um, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood style thing, where you, you're just being trucked around this environment uh, the way they want you to be. Like, why wouldn't, you know, so that you experience everything exactly the way they wanted you to see it. Uh, instead, you know, you kind of have this clunky control scheme, which, again, works fine, but um, it, it, it seems unnecessary. You know, they have these scares that they want to show you, so why not just let me sit there and, and experience it the way you want me to. I do reach out here and I grab the key by doing absolutely nothing except putting my fist in front of it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I would have preferred and like just make a series of uh, of haunted house rides. How awesome would that be? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I would take, for $5, I would take a new episode of The Bellows every single month. I would, I would, I kid you not, I would buy a haunted house ride where you sit there in a car and it takes you through their haunted house every month for the whole year. And at the end of the year, they'd have $60 of mine. And, uh, and I would have played, I don't know, what's, what's 15 minutes times... Uh, 12. It would be like two hours of, uh... Yeah, it's more than two hours. I'm bad at math, apparently. Uh, you know, I'd, ha I'd have my monthly haunted house, um, you know, dose every month. It'd be fantastic. And so, I mean, you know, there's no reason they can't do that with, with what they have here. But it just seems like a ride makes more sense. All right, I'm done telling... I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I don't need to tell the developers how to make their game, but that's, that's something that I think would have been more appealing. Now, uh, I should also mention that I, I love haunted houses. I love scary movies. I love Resident Evil 7. I love scary video games. Uh, I want to be scared. Uh, and if something's not really scaring me, then there's probably, there's probably something wrong, right? Um, Resident Evil 7, obviously very scary. Uh, scary movies can be scary, and sometimes sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But I like to, I like to just like VR, I want to play my scary games in VR. Uh, I like to go to the movies to see my scary movies because I want the optimal scary experience for, uh, for the movie, right? So, because you're too comfortable in your own house, I think. You know, there's a... Uh, when you're in your own house, you're 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 safe and secure, and, uh, and you don't feel like anything can really hurt you. Now, obviously, that's not totally true, but that's generally the vibe I think most people have. And so, scary movies, watching it on your couch with a loved one, uh, you know, on your television, the door is locked. You know, it's it's a different feeling than going out to the movie theater, where at the movie theater, well, you're sitting, you know, in this huge room with giant screen and really loud sound. And, um, and basically, there's... Uh, I can't figure out why this body doesn't land properly. Like it... Like the... His or her back is like arched? I don't know. I, but check out these eyes, though. That's... That's pretty creepy. Uh, yeah, so the movie theaters, you know, you're surrounded by a bunch of people you don't know in a really big dark room with a lot of noise. Um, and uh, and I think that's like the proper way to see a scary movie. Uh, so I go out of my way to make things. I don't even really see any other kinds of movies in the movie theater. I see, I see scary movies in the movie theater because, uh, again, the optimal way to see them, in my opinion. 
Uh, here's the second time, second and only other time you use R2 to interact with an object. And here's the probably biggest scare yeah. for me. The first time that definitely got me. Um, every other time, you know what to expect. It's not gonna, not gonna do anything to you. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm a guy that likes to be scared of, and, uh, and I will go out of my way to be scared. The concept of this, I really, I really like. Um, and graphically, uh, you know, it's sort of all over the place. I think at the beginning, it gives the sense that the game will look pretty good, and it looks okay. Uh, I don't think the graphics are this game's downfall. I think, I think maybe scenes like that are this game's downfall. There's nothing subtle here. Um, Maybe if we started with like small creaks and small noises and uh, and then slowly graduated to bigger scares, but uh, right off the bat it was uh they tried to make you scared from the from the get go um, and it's been nothing but jump scares the entire time uh, the least scary thing is this whatever that is uh, we'll see that one more time. But really, there's no, there's no narrative here. There's no character development. There's no real characters. I don't even understand like who I'm supposed to be, um, or, or what I'm supposed to be doing. I guess I'm just supposed to be getting out of the haunted house, uh, and I'm fine with that. You know, again, it's it's this is not the AAA experience that. Uh, I mean, no one expected it to be, so it's fine. You know, as as I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to either recommend this game or not. And I think uh, I think everyone so far watching has already fallen into th one of three camps. Uh, the first one being, hey, I uh, I don't want to spoil this. I want to experience it for myself. Uh, so I'm out, and they stopped watching like you know after the first minute, and they bought the game. Uh, the second camp probably stopped watching because they don't care about this at all. And then the third. Uh, you guys, the ones who are still watching, uh, decided not to buy the game and didn't mind the whole thing being spoiled. Uh, so that's uh, that's the bellows. Now the loading screen, which means segment two is over, and for some reason, uh, some reason the screen goes black every time I see. The title screen. So I'm standing in a, a cemetery, a graveyard of sorts. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Five bucks. I, I guess it all depends on what five dollars means to you. Uh, this is uh, better than Ghostbusters VR because it's much longer, uh, but it also I, I don't. I don't know what price would be appropriate for this. If five dollars is too much, what's the right price? Two dollars, three dollars? I don't. I don't know. I, I will say, move controllers unnecessary. DualShock is definitely the way to go. Uh, if you need something to show your friends, this isn't a bad way to spend five dollars. But again, uh, it's it's hard to recommend. I guess. I guess that's what I'm saying. Uh, and if you already watched the entire Let's Play, then I'm assuming that you're not going to buy it anyway because you just. Spoiled everything for yourself. All right, you guys. I've had some major technical problems this uh, today. I woke up super late, and then, uh, and then I. This is not the first let's play I tried to create of this. Um, I'm having some really strange technical problems today, so I'm really trying to get the channel moving forward. Uh, so hopefully, I can get the fantastic contraption review. Um, hopefully, I can get that up sooner rather than later. Uh, but it's taking me forever to get anything done today. It's been really frustrating. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and, and liking what we do. Um, yeah. I really do love you all. <laughs>